now entering the horror sector. Bubba da ba da ba da ba da da. Bubba ba da ba da ba da da. Hello and welcome back to the Horror Sanctum podcast. I'm Jay. Uh, that's John, Kellen, TJ. Uh, and if you recognize those sounds, then you already know the movie that we're going to be talking about this week. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, you're also all in for a treat. Um, there's been stories, rumors, legends, cave etchings of how Kellen and I met and uh, watered this bromance into the beautiful bouquet that it is today. And there's one person to thank for that, and she happens to be on this episode with us today, uh, Miss Krista Ladd. Krista, hello, and welcome hello. to the Sanctum. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Excited to be here. Nervous. All the <laughs> all the feels. <laughs> we all we all do the nervous poops before we come on. So you know, just do that next time. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> your movie of choice was from 2004. And I couldn't remember we all saw it together or not. Kellen said we did see it in theaters together. Uh, I couldn't quite remember that. Uh, but it's one of the few movies I own multiple copies of um, because I loved it so much. And that is 2004's Shaun of the Dead, directed by Edgar Wright. Um, if you're not familiar, what the fuck? First of all, how <laughs> dare you? Secondly, how dare you? This movie is amazing. You should have seen it multiple times by now um but if you haven't that's okay too so come with us as we take the car go to mums kill phil sorry grab liz go to the winchester have a cold pint and wait for all of this to blow over uh how's that for a slice of fried gold yeah boy <laughs> oh the cheese is thick in this episode <laughs> But we didn't even write um, it that way. It just happened so naturally. Oh my God. Right out of us. <laughs> it's like we finished each other's sandwiches. <laughs> um, yeah, Shaun of the Dead. Um, like Jay said, we, we, the three of us saw it in theaters um, when it came out. It was, I hadn't even heard of it when it um, initially released. So it was a surprise to me um, that this movie even existed. So I was, I was super excited. Um, I'd never been to the theater that we went to anyway. Um, and then to see such an amazing film. Um, spoiler alert, I love this movie as well. <laughs> and anybody that doesn't is wrong. Um, it's basically, what if you took the five worst possible people to have as a, a group in a zombie apocalypse and threw them in a zombie apocalypse? Um, you have Sean, Ed, Liz, Diane, and David. And they're basically throughout the entire film trying to uh, survive themselves <laughs> while a zombie apocalypse goes on around them. Um, like Jay said, directed by Edgar Wright, one of my favorite directors. Uh, he did he did Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Baby Driver, just to name a few. Um, also, spoilers, two of Edgar Wright's movies are in my top ten. Um, this one and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is a perfect film to me. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've seen that one as many times as I've seen this one. Just another um, reason why we're besties, because like, which are also in my top ten. Scott Pilgrim's probably in my top five. Which Jay and I actually saw Scott Pilgrim in the theaters together, and there was like no one there. It was very sad. Um, yeah, but I'm was. glad it got the cult following that it finally did because it. Deserved. Yeah, it didn't do well in the box office. If you mm -hmm. if you if you Google, it didn't do well. It was it was kind of like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Is that after after it? Um met its glory days that it deserved um but so sean of the dead so sean is, is he's such an interesting character because he's so oblivious the entire time it's not till the very end that he actually becomes the hero the rest of the time he's completely oblivious to what's going on around him and they and they show that several times where he's he's oblivious to what uh liz wants or or his role as the boyfriend to her he's oblivious to ed draining him of of his potential uh he's oblivious to the zombie apocalypse happening um one of the best scenes in the movie um that's just kind of a throwaway scene is when he's flipping through the channels and it's basically explaining what's going on in each different clip from the from the channel and even then he's still oblivious until he finally stops on something and sees it happening and then even then he still isn't really clued in until he sees the girl in the backyard um fall on the pole and get back up before he actually realizes, well, it's okay, so <laughs> something's going on. Um, the opening scene um, is so brilliantly done. 
with all of the people kind of just going through the motions like zombies, you know, pushing the carts, doing their daily routine. Um, so the parallel, uh, this being a zombie film and kind of imitating that people are basically zombies anyway, um, especially when they're stuck in a rut or in their mundane day to day. Um, and, and that's going to be a theme probably for most people with so many parallels in this movie, so much foreshadowing. It's such a smart movie, uh, so well written. Um, the three roommates, um, Pete, I think is his name, mm -hmm. Pete, Ed, who's just kind of like living there, <laughs> but not really a roommate. And then Sean, it, it's kind of Sean is the middle ground between the two. It's kind of showing where he has, is in his life where, you know, Ed is his, you know, childish way. And then Pete is where he, you know, should be at this point in his life. So it's kind of a great, a great way of showing where Sean is in this film is he's just kind of stuck. He doesn't really have any direction. He's just kind of going through the motions like a zombie. Um, the fence jump, um, if you've watched Hot Fuzz, um, such a great callback. <laughs> when and it pays off the Hot Fuzz. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, when, yeah, because he, he, in this one, he's like, what, you've never taken a shortcut and then just fails immediately. And, but in Hot Fuzz, it's the exact opposite. He's like a ninja flipping over these fences, um, just <laughs> doing barrels in the air and, and twisting. Yeah. I, I, I thought that was a neat callback. Um, considering that's part of the, the whatever it's the called. The Cornetto Trilogy. Cornetto Trilogy, yeah. Um, a thing I noticed in this, and, and I talked to Krista about this, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, is it's different watching a movie for entertainment, which I've watched this movie probably 20 times, compared to watching it with intent. And I noticed something in this that I hadn't noticed before. For 75% of this movie, the men are useless. <laughs> I think they are absolutely oh, useless. Utterly. <laughs> so yes. up to the point where the girls give him the um whatever the, the tetherball tether pole. pole and he's trying to hit it with the tether <laughs> and they're going, no, stab it. <laughs> um they're I mean, they're literally absolutely pointless in the film as far as doing anything useful. They're sitting there going through the records, deciding which ones they want to throw while zombies are about to try to eat them. And they're using records as weapons as if that's a viable thing. This might be all men in this universe though, because we'll get into the doppelganger gang. I think at least I will bring that up, uh, which is led by Yvonne. Um, so I, it may, might is, be all men. It's a very interesting point. Which is another funny scene, especially with both Ed's wearing the same shirt. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I only have, I, I, I talked about the foreshadowing. I don't want to get into too much because there's so much to talk about. And, and with so many guests, guests and then opinions, I don't want to take everything. Uh, so I got two more points. The, the movie itself for me is probably, even though it's a comedy, it's the most accurate portrayal of how a zombie apocalypse would play out in today's society. You know, 24 hours where nobody knows what's going on. And then finally the military steps in and kicks butt and cleans house and gets everything together. And then two, the exploitation of the zombies after the fact with the reality shows and them having them chained up and making them do manual labor that totally tracks even though this is 2004, that still tracks for 2023. That's exactly how zombies would be. Used. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say, and then I'll pass off to Krista. Um, and this has nothing to do with the film other than it's the song that happens during the uh, bar fight between the bar owner and Sean and the party. Queens Don't Stop Me Now starts playing. And scientifically speaking, it is the most uplifting song ever recorded. Science determined based on beats per minute, the scale in which the song was written and how many different chords are used. Um, those three factors, according to Dr. Jacob Jolige, are key components to feel good songs. Lyrical themes were also taken into consideration. So I thought that was just an interesting fact that they scientifically proved that this is the most uplifting song ever written. Just thought i'd throw that out there but. You, did, you did big research <laughs> and I, it was all random was, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that was that was a really good uh good solid breakdown i feel like you love this movie as much as i do um again thank you for letting me pick this movie i know it's not a traditional horror movie that you guys usually cover but it is my top favorite i'm 40 years old and still if someone asks me what my favorite movie is i still say Shaun of the dead 
It was, it's one of the very few movies that I have seen multiple times in the theater. Jay, I'm pretty sure we saw it and said, we need to have other people see this. And we took Kellen to see it. So we, I know we saw this. Took more our baby than one boy time. to the movies. Yes. <laughs> that in between is really cute. Um, it really introduced me to British cinema. Um, definitely to Edgar Wright. It was, it was like my starter drug for finding Olivia Coleman eventually in the hot fuzz. Um, it is insanely rewatchable. I still am finding new things every time I watch it. Um, which is just, it's, that's to me a sign of a great movie. Um, and that they put so much of themselves into it and their hearts into it. Um, preparing for this, I watched it or rewatched it twice, but in between, I also watched Spaced. I don't know, has anybody watched Spaced? Yes. Yes. Um, so it's like, Shaun of the Dead is almost this love letter a little bit to Spaced fans. Like most of the zombies were. Um, space fans who were following on like the message boards online. and there's a zombie episode of the original and series. that was the inspiration for mm-hmm. edgar wright to write like they did that episode of space where there's zombies um and they, they had so much fun filming it he was like i think we should do this like a movie and they did um let's see tons of cameos yvonne that i mentioned in the doppelganger gang she's actually the the counterpart in the space series you really have to watch it helen oh oh, please i'll add it to my list thank you um lots of little little easter eggs in there the boyfriend line at the bar you treat him like your boyfriend he says thanks babe that's from space um i just i love edgar wright um you can see him like very early he's he's matured from space it's a little rougher with his wipes and fast edits and the music. It's he's really grown and he he's definitely come into it now. But oh, I just I'm sorry I'm having a hard time talking about it. I just love it so much. Um, all the callbacks you've got red on you. It's said very early and then it's said again later um, in a very different context. Uh, he's not my dad. He keeps saying it early like he's not my dad and then by the time the scene in the car happens he's not my dad now because he's he's a zombie now i'm I'm having i get i get that was yeah that was an interesting transition too yeah and it's so fast too but like a little beautiful little scene and it's great right it's like great just great filmmaking yeah shadowing that yeah um Let's see. I have a list. I went old school. It's on paper, and I know it keeps making noise. Um, bu- 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 bu. What did we talk about, Kellen, earlier? Oh, Edgar Wright. So he they had a lot of people. Um, he complained when it first he was making it, and when it first came out, people called it like a spoof on zombie movies, and he would get offended. Um, and he would say, "No, it's it's not a spoof. It's not a take on monsters. It's a it's a love letter." to zombie movies like they screened this for george romero and they had little things in there like we're coming to get you barbara that's from night of the living dead and george romero didn't catch it until after they told him about like they called him later and told him about it like there's so many little things and even the voice that ed affects is 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 the girl's brother who ends up getting killed in the cemetery he's affecting a voice to spook her out saying they're coming for you barbara ed puts on a little bit of that voice Uh uh-huh i don't know why that made me think of the scene with the the um slide when Sean walks up the slide, I guess because that's when he that see the horror zombies. That is such a good visual crack comic up every moment. Time. I've yep. seen it twenty Climbing times. Climbing up that slide, so intentional. Yes. <laughs> Standing, coming right back down. It's such good visual comedy too. Um, Simon Pegg is really and Nick Frost are very just so talented at at that. Um, I wish I had not done this on paper now. <laughs> Um, if you could see, she has so many notes. If that shows you how much that she enjoys this movie. <laughs> I enjoyed re-watching it and, and, and making the notes. Um, but I, I, I want to have like back and forth with you guys. So I kind of want to like hear what you guys think about it and, and go back and forth with you, if that's okay. Okay. 
Well, I think I'm up next. So I have a long history with this with this movie, and I'm gonna have to give a shout out to my cousin Brent, who's four years older than me. We kind of grew up like brothers, and he was the guy that would often turn me on to to things before they were cool kind of thing. So I knew about this film when it first got released in the UK about Ooh. a year before it got released in in uh North American release, either in physical media or the theater. So I actually had the region two DVD of this thing on my unlocked wow. DVD player. Yeah. But the first Humble way brag. I saw it, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I knew it before my region B DVD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was Region 2 DVDs. You put Letters or blu rays so. <laughs> like my Region 2 DVD. Region 2 <laughs> DVD. Pinkies up, everybody. Pinkies Let's up. get it right. Let's get it right. So I actually watched this. There used to be... Uh, so I was never into piracy, but my cousin, big into piracy. So I was the... Uh, I was the benefactor of, of of some of his early days. You heard it here first. P TJ pirated Shaun of the Dead. No, 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 no. Brent, <laughs> my cousin, pirated it. And then I got the, TJ. <laughs> the two disc VCD of this. This was a vi a video CD, which didn't have enough megabytes to uh to put a full film on. So you had to split it right in the middle in an awkward scene. We are so old. If it makes you feel any better, the first pirated disc I ever got from somebody was Passion of the Christ. So oh wow. <laughs> well, that was about the same era too. That's the <laughs> most random pirate movie. Yeah. God damn it. He was just and we were just at his house and he was just like, oh, do you want to copy a Passion of the Christ? <laughs> so I, I like to okay think that with that <laughs> right i like to think that you went to church and you went to 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 sing a song with everybody you opened up the book and there was just like a usb drive like cut out oh that was way before usb drives. Drives. <laughs> <laughs> that's oddly enough uh the first way i ever watched suspiria was on a two disc vcd and it broke up right in the middle of the scene where the dog's about to eat the blind guy uh, spoiler alert uh um, um which totally ruined that scene but uh Back to Shaun of the Dead. So yes, I I was I was brought into the club of of Simon Pegg and Nick Frost and Edgar Wright and and the that trio of comedy British comedy gold early on, and uh, subsequently went back watched all the two series of Spaced, Love Spaced. Uh, there's a lot of the same uh, actors and stuff like the the doppelganger girlfriend who's a friend mm -hmm. that they keep running into is the main girl in Spaced. Um, Nick Nick Frost is is kind of the the weird neighbor who's big into military stuff and is is kind of he would be a great American. Oh yeah, oh he's yeah. he's a MAGA. He was he was a yeah. MAGA guy for sure. <laughs> uh before pete, before pete was, was cool. also in space too pete, pete was also in space and mm -hmm. the, the dave was in another popular uh series called little black books uh mm -hmm. which was a very popular bbc comedy series around the same era uh so so a lot of cool stuff going on in, in that generation um but the film itself uh, as you said, Chris, it was a, a love letter to the George Romero zombie film. Uh, and this was at a time where that had long since been gone. Romero had not made a zombie film since 1985 with Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. This is 19 years later. And this was, though, on the heels uh, of the 2002 thing that really first started the trickling of the zombie craze 28 days later also a british zombie film by edgar wright was so upset about that i heard an interview he was very worried about pre-zombies yeah because they were working on this and, and and i've seen this film probably no joke like 50 times over the last 20 years and I noticed something go, going back to what you just said that I've never noticed towards the end of the film. Uh, there's an Easter egg uh, where ap after, after the, the military clean up everything. And then Sean's back at home on the couch, watching TV, a news report mm -hmm. you, you don't see, but you hear, and it's Edgar Wright's voice. And it's when people are trying to explain what happened and what caused the zombie attack. And he said, uh, some people said it was rage filled monkeys started started the thing, which is totally mm -hmm. 
to shitting on 28 days later yeah but then he starts to say but that's bullshit and then it cuts the channel right before he says it so so obviously that's a little wink to yeah we mm -hmm. know that this come from that but this is not the kind of story we're telling because a, a, a lot and of people that didn't like those zombies that is danny boyle and, and the that, editor has worked with with danny boyle before he was he was actually edited slumdog millionaire oh wow um, that's a great so great film. yes very good film. look i pulled that out so <laughs> nice <laughs> usually i do the history gimmick but uh nice to have some i didn't know that um uh, another little easter egg for people that are into this and i actually got to meet in 2007 when, when uh Nick Frost, Simon Pegg, and Edgar Wright were come, making their first U.S. Uh, tour since Shaun of the Dead. They were promoting the premiere of Hot Fuzz, and they were playing it in select major markets. And the closest one to us where we were at in South Carolina at the time was Atlanta, Georgia. So me and my cousin Brent, who turned me on to Shaun of the Dead and Space and all that stuff, <sighs> we, we drove to a, this kind of an art house theater, kind of like the Bell Court. It's like an old theater uh and you had to had to be in the know like only the fanboys were here at this thing and it was packed mm. it was great it was the, the kind of crowd you want to see hot fuzz with for the first time and we got to meet them they signed like all of our dvds and stuff that we had of like our region two you know two cool for Greg. yeah yes <laughs> we got like to take Big pictures Greg. with them and it just happened to be, be about it that. happened to be nick frost's birthday that day so we all sung happy birthday to him they were giving him uh. a cake they were doing this weird thing where he got so many cakes because they were doing like this two-week tour and everybody was giving him a birthday cake so they they started this youtube thing where they were just flushing the cakes down the toilet because they couldn't eat them all but anyway they were really cool um and i've i've been a, a lifelong fan of all of them since but after those two films as around that same era nick uh nick frost started his own series called danger Fifty Thousand volts whereas he kind of plays a like uh almost like a tim the Toolman taylor type thing but for safety and like how to prepare for for certain scenarios and they did one where simon pegg uh, plays a character and it's how to prepare for a zombie apocalypse it was like a special episode it's on the dvd of that i highly recommend watching it i think it's on youtube it used to be on youtube hilarious because simon Pegg's playing like a a weird survivalist like buck tooth character and it's just 30 minutes of pure pure zombie gold with those the same crew but yeah uh the cornetto trilogy uh, that would be rounded out by Hot Fuzz and then uh, at at the world's end. Uh, so, some of the best. It's, they all have a tinge of horror to them, but they're all like different types of horror, right? Um, and and man, I, I can't say enough good stuff about this this film. Uh, probably a top five horror co comedies of all time for sure. I think most people would unanimously say this, but the cool thing about this is, uh, yeah, 28 days later kind of started the, the interest to get back, uh, some zombies. There was another pivotal film in 2003 that was an Australian film called undead that, that, that kind of bridged some gaps between the newer type of run and fast zombies and the old school Romero zombies. And then the next year, 2004, Shaun of the dead comes out and it's, pure love letter to Romero and because of that renewed interest and how well it did when it come to the States uh, Romero was able to make another zombie film which was supposed to be kind of the version of Day of the Dead that he wanted to make 20 years before but couldn't get the money and the locations and stuff so because of Shaun of the Dead without Shaun of the Dead you probably never get Land of the Dead George Romero's return to the zombie genre 28 days 20, no, 20, not 28 days later, 20 years later. And um, because Romero loved what they did so much with that and, and the renewed interest in his zombie verse, he put Nick Frost and Simon Pegg as zombies in a scene in, in the film. And, and there's uh, some special features on one of the, the DVD releases that, that has a whole feature in it. Oh, it's great. It's great. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, if you love Romero zombies, uh, that's probably his last, you know, so it, it, it was divisive at, at the time, but it was his last good zombie movie, really. I mean, the, the diary of the dead, not so great and survival of the dead. You can just skip terrible. Yeah. It's not okay. good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but land of the dead was, was good. And I think people have come around to it in the 20 years since, uh, more so. And I would, I would give it a recommend now. But uh, Jay, what do you think? Or John, John, you're next. Yeah, my bad. So, yeah, honestly, I just, <laughs> I kind of hate this movie, to be honest with you guys. You no, can I'm, rot I'm, in hell, you stupid. I'm, okay. I'm, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, can I, can't even, I can't even like pretend that, no, I love this movie. This is, um, I'll just say up front, this is a perfect film. Like, this is absolute, this is like Jaws. This is a perfect constructed film of what it's trying to do. There's, there's no flaws in this movie. So I'm not even going to try. It's, um, you know, Edgar Wright's someone that I wasn't, before this film, I, I wasn't really aware of. I think the first of his films that I watched was Hot Fuzz. So Hot Fuzz is my favorite. This is the best, absolutely. But Hot Fuzz is kind of like, I think it's because the buddy cop, comedy type vibe it's of fun. it it's, it's a fun. super fun movie and yeah. it has olivia coleman yeah you can't you can't beat that yeah it's and it's not really i mean they're two different types of films but yes i think this is definitely uh the best um at world's end i think i've seen it maybe twice I really need to rewatch it i remember liking it it's just been like it's it's the weakest time. of the three definitely yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty pretty much everybody thinks that. And you get oh, Nick yeah. Frost as a straight man, which is yeah harder. I think it was harder for me to swallow in in that one because um, he's yeah. so great being a doofus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was kind of the odd thing, and then I remember that now. And Simon Pegg was like, the and it's like a take on body. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is kind of what yes. they're parodying there. Pretty much. So. I think with this movie, I mean, everything is just top notch. The music, the the transition scenes, the camera work, the way they did transitions in this is still mm -hmm. unbelievable. Like just when they're beating the zombies to death in the backyard and it zooms right in on Ed, he's beating the Cornetto, licking the paper. It's like covered in blood. Yes. Yes. It's just everything that they do is so intentional. And the music, it does, there are actually snippets from um the goblin soundtrack of dawn of the dead mm -hmm. so, so they borrow it's obviously i mean obviously dawn of the dead is obviously what inspired this but there's a lot of love letters to stuff like this there's um just the way it lays out as a film by the end the military steps in kind of mm -hmm. like a lot of romero movies um the uh the zombie that's in the backyard at the beginning so there's two of them the fat zombie that's mm -hmm. basically the zombie from Lucio Fulcher's Fulci's zombie. So I never thought about that till now, but the fat zombie in the boat in zombie is basically that zombie in Shaun of the Dead. I'm so glad you knew that because I have in my notes, the place that does the fish is Fulci's. Oh, you're uh, right. Yeah. Forgot about wow. that. I have a couple more of these, so I'm hoping to be able to drop them in. Nice. Um, I, didn't, I didn't notice that one either. And I'm, yeah, I, and that's what it's called in the phone book. It's full cheese, the place that does the fish. <laughs> wow. It, and you know, it's I, I've not seen this a ton. I've probably seen the movie like maybe nine or ten times my whole life. Gotta watch it more. It's and that's the thing. I rewatching it, it's like I just there were so many things I noticed because going in, I kind of thought. I was like, you know, Shaun of the Dead, it's one of the best ever. But part of me was like, is it really that good of what I remember? And so then I start rewatching it and I'm like, I'm like, you know, Edgar Wright, it's like, he's one of the best ever. Like, people don't put him up there with like Quentin Tarantino, but mm -hmm. he's up there with his, any of these. Guys. He's pacing, like the modern his John in his Carpenter. movies is insane. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. The way that he structures his films is just so beautifully done. There's no wasted anything. Everything no. is there for a reason, and it's no, exactly. It's very like, yeah. There's no, everything is like a like a callback, or there's intent. Like you were talking about yeah. Philip dying in the car, and mm -hmm. then like that scene was like so 
powerful. I mean, there's so much. The thing about this movie that I like is that it is a zombie film. It's a horror film, but it's not really trying to be a comedy. It's just the characters are funny. But yeah. if you put different characters in this movie, it's just a scary ass zombie movie. Well, the so original tagline, at least in the UK, was a romantic comedy, dot, 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 with zombies. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is. It is bromance, too. I mean, there's no doubting that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's the way it takes itself seriously, everything that ties back in within the movie, all the callbacks. I mean, it's it's really hard to point out anything, any flaws in it, really. it's um, It's one of those movies, too, that I think, you rewatch it like you were saying earlier, you notice small things here and there over and over and over and over again. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not much more I can say about it. And it's, it's kind of just like the perfect horror comedy. It's not my favorite of his films. I would say hot five is, is my favorite, but this yeah. is like the best. This is, it's definitely in the top 20 best films ever. Um, I don't know of a horror comedy that's better. Maybe, I mean, this and Bubba Hotep, like horror comedies are like right there for me. So yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I think the worst part of the entire film was just David and his character. And he, I think him getting ripped terrible. apart, right. Him getting ripped apart. That was from Day of the Dead, right? Like, don't they do that in Day of the yeah. Dead? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was reading earlier that Diane, his, you know, platonic friend, girlfriend, whatever she was to him. Uh, she runs out after he gets torn apart she runs out but on the dvd extras that tj has humble bragged about a few times (laughs) uh it says that she survives like she ends up taking david's leg and fighting her way through the zombies then hiding up in a tree uh, Mm -hmm. well that fits with the with the typical movie trope where if you don't see them die on screen they they're not really dead yeah exactly and then uh i also loved how they never said they well they, they try to stay away from the word zombie because in most zombie movies and TV shows, they're not called zombies. Like, that's just the word that we came up with. I think uh, Ed probably says it once and Sean's like, no, we don't. don't call they they say, don't say the Z word because the they Zed don't word. say Z. They say Z. Mm-hmm. Well, doesn't David call his mom a zombie in the, she's a zombie. I don't, don't yeah, call my mom in that. The bar. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. They do yeah. sort they of say it like two that. or three times. They acknowledge yeah. that, you know, zombie movies exist and they don't yeah. say it normally mm-hmm. so Edgar, Edgar Wright is perfect like we've all touched on from space mm-hmm. to uh last night in Soho um all his films are amazing um the movie itself is well acted it's it's funny and you know probably when we watched it the first time while we did enjoy it and and wanted to show other people I think the older we got the more we appreciate this film because the humor is different it's kind of the same thing like last year i watched seinfeld start to finish for the first time ever never watched seinfeld and i always say i'm glad i didn't because i probably wouldn't have thought it was as funny you know in high school and middle school as i do as an adult and this is another one of those films where if you didn't think it was funny when you saw it 20 years ago go back watch it again pick up on a lot of things and Um, i would venture to say too that people our generation most of them hadn't seen the whole romero trilogy they saw this first and then went back to watch it definitely yeah um but you know going last is always like i like going last but also it takes away from anything that i can say because usually it's touched on unless we have you know divisive opinions but in this case as soon as krista picked this movie we already knew where it was headed like our little movie review i've already made one up to send to tj but i'm waiting to verify that the ranking is what i think the ranking is going to be i was very worried that i was going to get flack for not picking like a straight horror movie no and it gave us a reason to watch it again and i haven't seen it in a couple of years <laughs> what was the what's the what's the stupid horrible thanksgiving movie that we watched thanksgiving no blood rage <laughs> blood, blood rage, rage. Hey, uh, we can watch don't blood you hate rage on blood on rage <laughs> i love blood rage i love it it's, it's right. i have it right there okay. i have it right there it's fantastic that's not cranberry um, sauce it's not cream, but that's the best line in the whole movie. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah. They like loved it so much. Points, they said it three times. <laughs> everybody's points. Uh, you know, I share the same thoughts and feelings. Um, the only, the only person I know who didn't like this movie is Christine Gregory, uh, because it was too much language. So shame on her. That is my mother. I mean, it, point. it does start early with, uh, can I get any of you a drink? 
Yeah. What what word was it? I can't remember. Oh, I can't say that word. It's you guys have a clean it's podcast. The it's the C word. Right? It's the best word, but it's well, it's and, he, word we and Ed drops the N word in this movie. Too. I oh, forgot about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which made and then I instantly paused because I had to think. I was like, "Is it okay since he's British?" No, because it's I mean, still he's not still okay. white. In two thousand four, people I thought, thought like it was the okay. Big, the first episode yeah. of Scrubs when JD asked Turk, he's like, "Now, even if I never normally wouldn't ever say it, if it was in a." song no he's still okay yeah. just, yeah. just to make sure yeah. he also he also has the uh the gay when he's when he's oh, but it's, yeah. you know it's a great uh, callback um it it speaks to the character it's true to the character but couldn't do it, it was very subtle he's like all right gay you know like yeah. it was just so yeah. subtle like they're amazing um both them together the whole trilogy and i don't know how many other f- Films. I know Day of the Dead was kind of trending in the direction, but where we domesticate the zombies. Like I know Fido. I'm sure there's a few others sprinkling. Well, Land of the Dead did that too. I think Sean and or and Ed were they were chained up in that one, right? They like were. Yeah. Or something. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh so that was something else that I hadn't necessarily seen at that time when I watched it the first time. It's like, oh, so if if my my friend gets bit by a zombie, I can just keep him in my shed and we can play video games. Like, that's fucking awesome. You know? So <laughs> A lot of groundbreaking, I think, for 2004 and, and for just me personally. Um, I can't say enough nice things about this flick. So uh, we'll go around and give our rankings and then we'll close up shop. Um, but what about I, what about Best Kill? Oh, yeah. Best, <laughs> kill. best kill. Keeping so, us on our toes, Krista. I like that's it. Nice. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's well, do Best Kill. So I'll, I'll preface this with I counted today on my second rewatch this week. Um because I was looking for other kills that I could actually add to the list and, and try and like, you don't really see a lot of other people get killed. I don't, Barbara gets killed. Are we counting zombies? I don't count zombies. Um, I love the pipe scene with Mary. Cause like when she lands on that pipe and pushes herself up, that's such a good, but that's not a kill. The only kill I think that counts is David. Cause it's so good and you're so ready to see him die because he's tried to shoot Barbara, and he tried to shoot Sean. Literally, and... he pulled the trigger. Yes. Well, yeah. well, he killed Pete. The he killed Pete. Well, Pete was already dead. He Pete was already, was already a, zombie. a zombie. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so just, just straight people. Uh, it's, it's gotta be for me, David. Any, any, uh, disagreements with that? <laughs> Does anyone else have all a in favor kill? say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Yeah. And, and it's also because we wanted it to happen. Like he's he's yes. the equivalent of Franklin from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, so, and it's, like, and it's totally a callback to Day of the Dead. They they pull yeah. him apart the same way they pull apart the the horrible yeah. Captain Rhodes in that film. Yeah. Well, and nobody else you see in this movie, you don't actually see them quote unquote die violently. They get bit and turned. You don't, haven't yeah. really seen anybody get, and then David gets. I would gets say what he got <laughs> the bites are bad though. Like I would say, like when Ed gets bitten, and like when Philip gets mm-hmm. bitten, it's it's rough. Like that the was... hole in Barbara's arm, yes. which was mocked up after another zombie movie, and I can't remember which one. I probably didn't write it down, but it was supposed to be an homage to another wound oh. on someone else in, oh. in another. Oh, I think you probably uh... know. Oh, actually, I think it might might be uh, American not... Werewolf in, in London, The Friend. Now, that, really now that is Edgar Wright's oh, yeah. favorite film. Yeah, I think um, that's what it was. Yeah, so he had... Oh. I should probably watch that sometime. Oh, oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, my God. Oh, so now, don't tell me you've seen it in Paris. <laughs> <but not> in <laughs> that's got a great soundtrack, though. That yeah, does. It, yes. does. it does. It's got Bush's mouth, like the remix, which yeah, is better that's... than the original. But yeah, I think we're all in agreement. And and that's Edgar Wright. The way that he was killed was not just a, a, an homage to Day of the Dead, but I think he knew, he was self aware of the character and he knew as an audience mm. was watching it, like, fuck that guy. Like, he <laughs> he deserves whatever he gets. And he got, he got, he got, got. It. So um, for rankings, obviously I'm a five. Um, it's, one of the few movies I own multiple copies of. I have the soundtrack. I will watch if it's on TV. Like, it, it, there's nothing wrong with this movie to me. Never has been, and there never will be. So I give it a five. Kellen, 
Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's in my top 10, possibly top five of all time. Um, again, I'm just like Jay, I own multiple copies of this movie. Um, when the still book came out, I bought the same still book that um, Jay had, the, the um, simple cover, not the one that kind of looked like, a, I guess, yeah, that one, the broken record cover. The broken um, record, nice. I have to speak or no one can see what we're pointing at. <laughs> um, yeah i bought that as soon as i saw it I, it was the, the best impulse buy i've had in probably in the last 10 years um so yeah for me i agree with everything jay said it's it's just a perfect film so five all right krista um, obviously if i could give it more than five it would be more than five so <laughs> it's a definite five stars for me all right tj unequivocally it's it's a five star and i think i've only given one or two films that so yeah uh, all right so all right john pressure bro pressure. well you're talking about uh perfect movies and then you mentioned someone mentioned american werewolf in london that mm-hmm. is also a perfect movie in my opinion like i i agree i can't praise that movie enough best werewolf film ever um yeah i mean this movie's great there's really nothing you can point out about this movie it's flawless um it's five out of five for sure. I mean, there's no yeah. no way it so, could be. So uh, if you can see this, I gave us. I went ahead and pre did the the <laughs> ranking. I did five out of five. What nice. what is the wow. good graphic? I'm for I'm for the zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so five out of five. Obviously, again, if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're listening to our show because this is like centered around what we love. And I've watched it, no joke, like 50 times. And I this Same. last time I watched it, nice. I picked up something I hadn't seen before. Well, like like Jay said, it's one of those, it's one of those movies that if it's on TV, you stop and watch. Even if you don't sit and watch the whole thing, if you just you stop and watch at least mm-hmm. 15, 20 minutes of it. Like I feel like if I ever got to a point where you you saw all the things, you knew all of the Easter eggs, you would still be able to watch it because you just appreciate that level of detail and craft that went into making it and sharing it with others this, this could be so a stage many Easter play. eggs oh yeah oh I mean, easily I this could be a thought play. about that i'm kind of surprised they haven't mm-hmm. adapted it honestly and i, I don't I, it was kind of we've kind of danced around it and then i'll, I'll let jay close it out um but and, and you've all kind of mentioned it this is not quote unquote a straight comedy it's comedic if that mm-hmm. makes sense. It's like they they didn't intentionally make this funny, but they made the characters, they put them in funny situations, which I think is so brilliant because yeah. they could have done it over the top and just made it a straight comedy that had horror elements, but they made a zombie film that had humor in it. Mm-hmm. Which is the trick. That's why horror comedy is the hardest balance to strike because you need to put straight characters in comedic situations. And that's where yes. the comedy comes, not trying to make them be funny in a life-threatening situation. That don't make sense. Yeah, even Ed is not the comic relief per se. He's just kind of an, an idiot mm-hmm. <laughs> and just keeps making dumb decisions that end up being funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the 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 quote that I say the most my, since I've seen this movie is there's a girl in the garden. So you guys know my <laughs> obsession with my forest critters I have in the backyard. So possum, raccoon, skunk, fox, like squirrels. Like So whenever I like peek out and see, I'm like, there's a girl in the garden whenever there's a possum. Like I've, I say that all the time. Like I love that. that and I love that whole scene with the uh, vinyl being thrown. Um, and, and then and you turn around and say, he's got an arm off. <laughs> But yeah, beautiful movie, hilarious, and and if you if you take away the humor for it, it is it is straight up horror. And then if you think about your group of friends, who you may mm-hmm. all be looking at one another now, do you trust them in this situation? Because um, Kellen's yeah. already told me he's not going to help me if I'm getting a gun pointed at know. me. At a liquor store I, I don't know why that made me just think of it, but real quick, when it shows the two groups passing, mm-hmm. other than the Ed character. It's almost like a parallel of this is the B squad in a zombie movie. It's the one that we're getting. Like these are not yeah. the people that you would yeah. want part of your zombie Yvonne's squad. Yvonne's team, Her they team. all yeah. still have their weapons. Yeah, you They're want them covered under. in blood. <laughs> yeah. uh, other than yeah. than Nega Ed, um, <laughs> it's it, they're all like actively there. That's the team you want to be on. Yeah. That's the zombie movie you normally get. Is yeah. is mm-hmm. the action people that, that they're the ones like in Twenty Eight Days Later? They're yes. the ones that make it to yes. the military and and, right. and Martin yes. and Martin Freeman. And Martin Freeman. Mm-hmm. Just a little little baby Martin Freeman. Um, all right, yeah. so uh, we're gonna close up shop. Um, 
be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to wherever you listen to this podcast now. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, if you have Amazon Music, I made a playlist. Uh, we'll have some uh, Queen on it after this episode. Uh, so go check that out as well. Um, and come back next week. I know we've jumbled some things up, so I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing next week. But hey, come and find out. Uh, Krista, thank you for coming on. And uh, thanks for your role in Kellen and I's friendship. Uh, life would be weird without it. Uh, life could be more peaceful without it. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been Rude. a while, 20, it's been a while, like what, 20, almost 20 years, like 20 years. So uh, we're dating ourselves. 2002. Movie came out in 2004. So I guess 22, 21 years. I've known okay. you for 2022, 22. It'd be, it'd be 2002, I think was when we joined ASI. 2001. 2001. Wow. Yeah. World. Was it? I thought it was yeah. in the spring. Was it in the fall? It was in the, was fall. In the fall. There we go. 2001. God, 22 years. Ugh. Yeah. Our friendship can legally drink plus a year. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, signing off, I'm Jay with John, Kella, Krista, and TJ. And until next time, keep it spooky. And there's a girl. Did you just call me Kella? He did. Kella, 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 Kella. So, okay, one thing. My umbrella. I didn't want to bring this up on the show because I didn't want it to even be considered a negative. But I'm just curious to what y'all thought when they meet and they're, you know, the groups meet and they're like, "Okay, we'll go this way. We'll go this way." Why did they do that? What was the logic? Because wouldn't you want to stick together? Or are they worried about zombies crowding? I think it was more they're they're on their own path. Yeah, they each had their own where they're going. Yeah, that's probably kind of okay. an homage to to mm-hmm. this is like I said, this is the B squad. This is you're these are not the yeah. normal people yeah. that you follow in a zombie movie. Here's the normal ones, but they're going that way. So we've nope. already met Yvonne. She's just bought a house. She's living like a grown up, and Sean is uh, taking his girlfriend on an anniversary date to, to the Winchester, maybe the Winchester. The Winchester <laughs> because he forgot to make reservations. So it's you know you're getting that juxtaposition of the. And Which is funny when they're because, like, oh, you're going to the pub. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the like first that. time they meet, they say they're going to the Winchester for one mm-hmm. terrible reason. And the second time they're going to hold up in the Winchester and she's silently judging him both times for different yes. reasons. <laughs> yes. Both very valid. Yes. All right. Well, I'm out. It's dinner time for me. Uh, thanks, right. Krista. That was Don't fun. get red on you. Thank you guys. Get some cornetto. Honor and a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for having you. For all your uh, notes and and good insights. Hello and welcome back to the Horror Sanctum Podcast. I'm John. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Start over. <laughs> Take leave two. it in. Leave it in. I like it. We'll go live. Yeah. You're John. Leave it in. Live. Yeah, you forgot your own name. Wow. I know. Well, I was reading, and John's the first fucking name after mine. So, all right. <laughs> Start again. All right. <laughs>